If we replace the heads, cam, and intake on a 4.8 liter, how much power is it worth? Let's not stop there. Let's run the same test on a 5.3. In this video, we ran a stock LR4 4.8 liter up on the dyno. Then we replaced the heads, cam, and intake. So how much power was that worth? Because one test isn't good enough, we performed the same test on the larger 5.3 liter. Along the way, we also snuck in an intake test. Lots of good stuff, so check it out. For this video, we actually had a pair of test motors, a 4.8 liter LR4 and a 5.3 liter LM7. On the 4.8 liter LR4, we first ran it stock up on the dyno, meaning stock heads, stock cams, stock intake, and everything else was stock on this motor. The one exception to both of these motors is that we ran them with the Holly HP management system, long tube headers, and without accessories. Now our upgrades on the motor included heads, cam, and intake. On the 4.8 liter, we installed a healthy crane cam, 590 lift, 224, 232 degree duration split, and 114 degree lobe separation angle. Actually, both motors shared that cam upgrade. The other thing they shared was the intake upgrade. We installed a fast LSXRT intake and a 102 millimeter throttle body on both the 4.8 and the 5.3. Where the two motors differed, because these motors were run separately and not together, was the cylinder head choice. Now, for the 4.8, we installed a set of TEA ported Stage 2 706 heads. On the 5.3, we installed a set of TFS 205 heads. Now, the reality is, on these two motors, those two heads were all but identical. We know because we've compared them back to back, and they both work very well. In fact, those two heads on those combinations were probably a bit of overkill because those heads will support way more power than either one of these combinations made. And it's not because the heads don't work, we just didn't have enough motor under the heads to really tax them. So let's start off by taking a look at the power gains offered on the 4.8, then we'll follow that up on the larger 5.3. Okay guys, here are the results for the 4.8 liter LR4. This is in stock trim. And this 4.8 liter uh, we freshened up from the junkyard, made 333 horsepower at 5,300 RPM and 343 foot-pounds of torque at 4,700 RPM. Now, the question I usually get is why does it make 333 horsepower when the 4.8 liter is rated so much lower than that by the factory? The reason is because we run this motor in a different configuration than the factory does. When the factory rates that power output, it is with all of the accessories, all of the air intake, the complete factory exhaust system, and with the factory tune. So that's how they rate the motor and that's how they test it. Now we don't do that on this test. When we ran this thing on the dyno, it was all stock, meaning stock throttle body, intake manifold, heads, cam, short block, all of that. But we did run it with no air intake, so just an open throttle body. We also ran it with an optimized tune, which is much better than the factory tune. And we also ran it with no accessories, just an electric water pump, and in this case, inch and three quarter long tube headers. So that's why this 4.8 liter is making more power than a factory rated number. But as we said, 333 horsepower at 5,300 RPM, and 343 foot-pounds of torque at 4,700 RPM. So it's doing pretty well. But now let's take a look and see what happened after we made our modifications, namely the ported cylinder heads, the camshaft, and the fast intake manifold. Got a big jump in power all the way up to 476 horsepower at 7,000 RPM and 392 foot-pounds of torque at 5,900 RPM. So both peak horsepower and peak torque increased, as we see here, and most of the gains are at the top of the rev range, as we see. Uh, don't, don't worry about the stuff down at 2,000 RPM on that 4.8. We loaded it that way down there because we were doing other testing uh, on some real mild camshaft on, and on stock headers and things. But as you can see, most of the gains from the mods came way out there, but we did pick up 143 horsepower total and about 50 foot-pounds of torque. So it was a good upgrade. 
So now we're going to take a look at, because one of the questions I always get is, yeah, but what about the fast intake? That's expensive. What happens if we just run the truck intake? So we're going to take a look at that in just a sec. So I wanted to cover one of the most common questions we get is, uh, especially on this 4.8 liter, because there are a couple, but we're going to deal with the intake first. So we ran this with a fast LSXRT, and there's confusion there about whether the LSXRT is for a truck or a, a, a car like the LSXR. And really that's more of a fitment issue. Both those manifolds actually produce almost identical power curves. One is not designed for a low RPM truck application. This LSXRT is not designed for a, a low speed truck application. They both make power up high. They just have different plenum volumes and a little different runner entry. But otherwise, when I've tested them back to back a number of times, they always seem to produce about the same power curve. But the question now is what happens if we run this uh, head and cam combination on the 4.8 with the stock truck intake manifold, which I have here because we did do that before we put the fast on. And as you can see, the fast definitely does make more power equipped with the stock truck. And this is an early truck and not a TBSS. It made 452 horsepower at 6,900 and 388 foot-pounds of torque at 5,500. So it was down from 5,500 out past 7,000 with the stock truck intake compared to the LSXRT. With the TBSS intake, you probably would be right in between those two um, because the, the Trailblazer SS works really well, especially on this 4.8. In my opinion, that's probably a good way to go on the 4.8. The other thing I wanted to mention is on this 4.8, because it's so small and, and the power output's not tremendous, you could probably could get away without having full CNC ported heads because, I mean, let's face it, those CNC ported heads from Total Engineer Flow work great and they have the potential to make a lot of power, but we're only using 450, 460, 470 horsepower worth. And the problem is, <clears throat> well, it's not a problem. You can get there with the factory head. So what I would recommend on a 4.8 is don't spend the money on a full blown set of CNC ported heads. And it's something you can do yourself. Take the stock 706 or 862 heads mill them a bit, and then do a little hand work. Maybe open the chamber up a little bit, do a little bowl work, a um, little cleaning up. And I think you could probably get most of the way there because you don't need a 600 horsepower set of heads on a motor that's only making 450. You can get there with the stock stuff. So now that we've taken a look at the 4.8, let's uh, jump over and see how the 5.3 did. Now let's take a look at the same test run on the larger 5.3. Now we can take a look at the power gains offered by replacing the heads, cam, and intake on the 5.3 liter. In stock trim, run just like our 4.8 with headers, open throttle body, electric water pump, and no accessories, the 5.3 liter produced 344 horsepower at 5200 RPM and 378 foot-pounds of torque at 4,300 RPM. Now, I need to cover one thing. Um, this is about the lowest power output that I've seen out of these stock 5.3s. Normally, they're about 10 horsepower and 10 foot-pounds above this. This was a used junkyard motor, so in this case, we kind of get what we get. But just know that this is a little bit lower starting point. Normally, they're in the mid-350 range, 355 or so and like 385 foot-pounds of torque when we start off with them. And I've run dozens of dozens of these, and this particular one just seemed like it was a little on the low side. So if we take a look at what happens when we run the upgrades, now remember, these aren't exactly the same upgrades as we did with the 4.8. That wasn't the goal of this test. We were just doing heads, cam, and intake on both of the motors of different displacements. It turns out that they were very similar, uh, same camshaft, same LSXRT intake, and, but on this motor, we used the TrickFlow 205 heads, which are really going to be very, very close in power to those TEA 706 heads. But let's take a look and see what happened when we made the modifications. This is the heads cam and, and intake and the fast intake. Equipped with that combination, the 5.3 made 484 horsepower at 6,700 and 424 foot-pounds of torque at 5,700. And had this thing started out where the rest of them do, I, I think we would be a lot closer to the 500 horsepower level. And this thing worked out really well, just like the 4.8. 
So now, again, your question has got to be, okay, what about with the factory truck intake? And something interesting happened there, so we're going to cover that in just a second. So just like with the 4.8, before we put the LSXRT intake on the 5.3, we also ran it with the factory early truck intake. So we can see it produced 484 horsepower with the LSXRT, and that picked up, that was 140 horsepower gain with the heads, cam, and intake over the stock 5.3. But if we compare the factory truck intake to the LSXRT, we see again, the, the fast manifold made more power from 5,500 on out. Um, but interestingly enough, on this 5.3, for some reason, the factory truck manifold made more power down low. And I, we normally don't see that on the fast. I mean, maybe at the very bottom, but usually they're very comparable uh, through most of the curve until the top. And then the fast picks up a ton at the top and, and usually a little more of this than this on the 5.3. The fast manifold is usually worth more over the factory truck manifold and the Trailblazer SS as we go up in displacement and power. So if you do that test on a 4.8, it's not worth as much. If you do it on a 5.3, it's generally worth more. If you do it on a 6.0, it's worth even more. The wilder the combination is, the more that manifold seems to be worth. But on this, on this particular test, this is what happened. I mean, the air fuel was spot on and the timing was spot on. So I'm not sure, but this is what happened, so that's what I'm reporting. Now that we've run this test, uh, I can talk a, a little bit about this 5.3. Just like with the 4.8, I think it's possible that you could get near these power numbers with just home porting your stock 706 heads. And if he went with it, especially in this case, if he went with a Trailblazer SS intake, I think you'd be right near these numbers. Um, I think if this 5.3 was right, that with this combination of the ported head, the trick flow heads, which I really like, the 205 heads on that small bore, and the fast intake and that camshaft, I, I'm sure that we could get near 500 if everything was right. And maybe a little more than that if we ran that other comp cam that I like to put in these things. That's that 54, 454-11, that's a 227 intake duration. And I think we, should, we could push this thing over 500 horsepower, which would be nice on a 5.3. So now let's get to our conclusions. Okay guys, what did we learn from this test? Well, the first thing is there's a ton of power waiting to be unleashed in a 4.8 or a 5.3. But you know what, that's not the only thing. I wanna bring up an important point. The combinations I ran on the 4.8 and 5.3 here are not the ultimate combinations. They're not the best. In fact, I wanna know what you guys have done. What kind of combinations have you guys put together that have made good power? Let's start off with a camshaft. Now in this combo, I ran that crane cam, but again, it's not the best cam. It's not the only cam. What about you guys? What do you think? What's your go-to cam for like a daily driver? What's your go-to cam for a street strip combination like the one I tested here? Or what's your go-to cam for a full race combination? What about the cylinder heads? We ran CNC ported heads on both these combinations, but you know what? I think we can get the same kind of power with a little hand porting, stuff you guys can do at home. If you were to take a set of 706 or 862 heads, mill them, do a little chamber work and a little bowl work, I think you'd get the same results. What about the intake? I know the fast intake is really good for power, but it's also kind of expensive. I think we can get the same power with a Trailblazer SS, especially on the little 4.8. What do you guys think? What's your go-to intake? Is it the Trailblazer? Is it the stock truck? Does anybody step up to the fast? Let me know. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Make sure to comment. Let me know what you guys think and what do you think? Should we run boost on these now? Thanks for watching.